All right, for December 7th, 2013, in case you missed the live stream, live coverage of the Conference on Common Eisen held at John Hopkins University on December 6, 2013, and that was yesterday, I will provide in the show more section below the links where you can watch the entire Conference on Common Eisen. If you have any, any concerns whatsoever, uh, hopefully this will help you. There's so much information just being spread across uh, the Internet. Uh, hopefully this will um, answer any and all of your questions. So the link below will take you to the entire conference held at John Hopkins University. Let's just watch for a moment a portion of what took place at the conference yesterday methods of processing um, that occur and then we can see just as it's about to leave the field of view sure enough it really starts to brighten up um, as we as we saw kind of that flare up in the last couple of days before perihelion there's a bright spike right there at the top of the tail that's what we see in the lasco c2 cameras c3 camera i'll get to that in a moment but from this field of view we went into the core two field of view so this is stereo a again we've got the sun in the center this time we've got venus in the field of view so we're getting a nice view of the planets in the solar system too so we see ice on come in go skirting around the sun and then the object formerly known as Comet Ison emerging from the other side. <laughs> so I'll just play that one more time because it's a it's kind of a cool movie. So as I said, this is Stereo A spacecraft. It's on the other side of the solar system from Earth, and it's one of two uh, Stereo spacecraft. So the other one, this is Stereo A. The other one, imaginatively, is Stereo B. Stereo B had an interesting um, viewpoint of the comet because the comet actually came directly between the sun and the spacecraft. And so as you see here, and this time we had Jupiter in the field of view, so we're really getting to see the planets here. Um, I'll just point out we saw a coronal mass ejection just happen in that movie right there. We did not see any obvious interactions between any coronal mass ejections and the comet, so we don't it seems like ISON at least dodged those bullets. And then we see the tail folding over beautifully in the, well, the dust. Um, we don't see any obvious signs of a nucleus here. It's kind of bright and condensed going in. But uh, on the way out, it's really just a, a diffuse kind of cloud that we see. Okay, yes, so the question was about celestial north and east, kind of the orientation of the images. Yes, they're all basically the same. These are the ecliptic plane is horizontally through the images, and north is where you'd expect it. And the movie that Everyone has seen, but it's so cool we'll do it again anyway. Lasco C3 camera. So this is the SOHO satellite, which to all intents and purposes is right at Earth. So we see ISON fly in behind the occulting disk, and out it comes. And uh, sure enough, regrettably, um, by the time it leaves the field of view, there's not a whole lot of comet left. And this certainly would be consistent with the observations that we've heard, that there's no emission from a nucleus coming out at that point. And what I, let me move on to the, well, there's a couple of things I want to say about this or point out. Um, just wind back the clock here. Uh, in addition to the LASCO cameras on SOHO, there was actually another instrument observing Comet Ison during perihelion, and that's the SUMA instrument on SOHO, which is a, ultraviolet uh, spectrometer and I have basically no familiarity with SUMA other than it exists and it takes images um, but I did hear just last night that they 
did have detections of the comet in that camera, but they basically, they were looking at Lyme and Alpha, and they basically saw no signature of a nucleus or a coma. They just saw a bright tail, and basically what they think is they were just seeing um, reflections from dust of the tail. They saw nothing that indicated that there was any active nucleus, or at least if there was, it was below their detection threshold, and that was right at perihelion. So that would indicate that even by perihelion, there may not have been much activity from any nucleus, if any at all. Um, we'll notice here, if you look at the saturation spikes on this, they're a good indicator of the brightness of the, the comet. So we see as it comes in to about 10 R sun or so, it's really bright, and then it turns over very, very quickly in that time period. And that's really when, uh, that's basically when, from Case's slide, when a lot of the rock started to boil off. And that's also when we see the Kreutz comets in Soho kind of turn over in their brightness. So it would be a reasonable assumption that that's when. When the rocks started to boil off. I just wanted to make sure you understood that part. Things really went, um, went wrong for ice on. <laughs> and then very quickly, how much time? A couple more minutes. Okay, perfect. Lasco C2 camera. Let me flip this one to screen. So this is the inner field of view, and we've all seen this ice on flying in, and then that little dusty thing coming out the the top there. Interesting down in the bottom right, you still see sort of the remains of that spike that we saw in Lasco C3. If I just wind back the clock here. Um, Matthew and I have seen a lot of comets in this field of view. Uh, we've seen a couple of thousand comets in this field of view. And we've never seen a trail like this from any comet in the Lasco field of view. And I believe the popular theory is that this is very heavy dust that's literally following the orbit of the comet. So it's stuff that hasn't moved out of the orbit. That's our understanding. Sorry, but are you talking about the, uh, the brighter screen? Yes. Yes, I'm talking about the bright streak. Is that more common? I mean, you see the diffuse part of it? So you always see that kind of thing? Yeah, the diffuse part that you see down here that I'm indicating with a cursor, that's sort of typically what we see, and that's sort of your your kind of standard issue vanilla dust tail from a comet. This spike is that something different. We saw something a little similar with pan stars in the the stereo field of view, a, a spike that came from the nucleus, and that was pretty confidently believed to be heavy dust. And so we think this is heavy stuff too. Now, whether that's um, indicative of a nucleus that's really falling apart and it's dropping that trail of chunks, that's for the dust modelers. And maybe Geraint, when we talk to him, he'll have some comments to add there. Before you leave that, I would just like to also have a discussion, <laughs> hopefully the day is proof to me that's not an ion gas panel. But let's save this discussion for the discussion time. We just yeah. like to stick so, to the talks yeah, at the moment. We can have the, we can have discussion about this. So um, I just wanted to point out that that little tail right there it is, you do see it right there. And True. very, very, very quickly, where's my okay? We'll look at. Oh, it's basically uh, it's basically white light. Yes. Yeah, there's a there's a filter on there, but essentially white light. It's just a, a flavor of white light. Okay, so that movie's not going to work. Okay, so I'll wrap it up for now, and then I've got a couple, a couple more movies that we can look at during discussion and stuff. Thank you, Carl. Next up is uh, Dean Posnell, SDO Observations of Comet Ison. And again, we're, we'll, we'll have plenty of time for a discussion. we just like to get the talks done first. Thanks for having me. I'm going to talk about what we saw during the perihelion passage of Comet Ison um, from SDO. And as far as we know, all the EUV imaging instruments outside of Sumer 
And I can sum up my talk with. <laughs> Darn it! You got a short one. <laughs> As a matter of, uh, well, let me describe what we what we look for when we when we're looking at a comet near perihelion in our EUV imagers. We're looking for signatures of oxygen, even though the filters are originally designed to look at iron lines in the in the solar corona. Uh, for when a comet leaves a trail of oxygen behind it we actually get to see oxygen as it heats up to coronal temperatures. So this is like oxygen four and oxygen five, should be in this image. Um, we anticipated a lot of problems with Einstein because it's a little further than Comet Lovejoy. We did actually see a comet in Comet Lovejoy. We saw one in an earlier comet as well. So we anticipated seeing something in these images too. Uh, we did not. As a matter of fact, the only person I think we should commit for this is but I see nothing. All right. Now, do we see nothing and do we actually mean it? So uh, people um, on the team, the SDO team, Carl Shriver out at Lockheed, Barbara Thompson at Goddard and myself have all gone in. We have um, about 1,200 images in each wavelength that we looked at. And we've looked at each one of those to try and find a trail. The easiest way to describe this is to take 300 images, that's about an hour's worth of, of observing for us, and take the average and then do the standard deviation. All right, I'm going to end right now. I'll put the links below. Now, this is for your own benefit if you want to watch this, if you have any fear or concern about the Comet Ison. Remember, these are trained master astronomers, the top of the field, top notch in their field, and not necessarily from NASA. and. Uh, they say we saw nothing and the links will be below no fear if you are a born-again Christian uh, you have a Heavenly Father that loves you that knows the thoughts that he has for you to give you hope and a future no weapon formed against you shall prosper you have nothing to fear the links will be below to the entire conference on Comet Ison we saw nothing